Welcome everyone to an introduction to the Robotics Roadmap for Australia. My name is Sue Kay and I'm the Research Director for Cyber Physical Systems with CSIRO's Data61. I was one of the driving forces behind the creation of a Robotics Roadmap which was released in Australia in uh, the middle of 2018. We're now undertaking a process of putting together the second version of the Robotics Roadmap for Australia. This presentation is to give you a background on why we created the first Robotics Roadmap for Australia, what some of our findings were from that process, and also an explanation of why we think it is a good time to work on version two of that roadmap. So just to go back in time a little bit, when I first started working in robotics, I was working with the Australian Centre for Robotic Vision. The Australian Centre for Robotic Vision is a centre of excellence funded by the Australian government. And in looking at what we could do to take some leadership in the robotics space in Australia, it occurred to me that while other countries had robotics roadmaps, Australia did not. And so I asked around and it seemed that at various times, different people in the robotics community had thought about putting a roadmap together, but for one reason or another, it had never uh, happened. And so the Australian Centre for Robotic Vision supported putting that roadmap together and I started to collect some allies to try and make it happen. Now at the time I was very lucky that on the advisory board for the Australian Centre for Robotic Vision is Professor Henrik Christensen from the University of California, San Diego. And Henrik has been involved and the driving force behind all three versions of the US Robotics Roadmap. So I looked at a lot of roadmaps from around the world and I was lucky to have the opportunity to spend some time with Henrik to really unpick how it was that he put the US Robotics Roadmap together and what some of the key ingredients were. Arguably the US Robotics Roadmap has been very successful. By the time the US Robotics Roadmap got to its second edition, it was directly responsible for the investment from the US government of more than $100 million into robotics research and development. One of the reasons the US Robotics Roadmap was successful was because it brought together a range of people to describe what the impact of robotics would have on different sectors of the economy that were important in the US. They were also very fortunate to have a direct line of, of contact and communication into the US Congress where there was a committee devoted to looking at robotics. Uh, as governments have changed, uh, the, that congressional committee has now disappeared uh, but at the time, the production of these roadmaps was really critical in painting the landscape for the US of the type of uh, positive changes that can be uh, implemented when you look at the adoption of robotics and automation in a country. And when we first started putting the roadmap together, we found that compared to many of our peer nations, Australia really isn't using a lot of robots or indeed very much artificial intelligence. So when you compare us to a country like the US, uh, the level at which many of our firms are applying automation uh, is quite low. A common measure of how much different countries are adopting robotics is called their robot population density. The robot population density is the number of industrial robots that a country has for every 10,000 employees. Now it's only industrial robots. Industrial robots are the type of robot that you might think of as being fixed on a factory floor that perform uh, particular tasks uh, such as welding or piecing things together. So it doesn't include service robots uh, like you might find uh, within a service environment like a concierge robot or even a vacuum cleaner robot or a toy robot. So when we look at industrial robots, Australia is, has a robot population density of 80 robots per 10,000 employees, which is below the world average of 85. We rank 23rd in the world in terms of our application of industrial robots. Uh, we're not last, so that is a good thing. 
However, when you compare us to the number one country in the world in terms of robot population density, which is South Korea, they have a robot population density of 710 robots per 10,000 employees. So there's quite a big gap there. Now, there are significant differences in the structure of the economies of a country like South Korea to Australia. For example, South Korea has a very well established electrical component manufacturing industry, which lends itself to the implementation of industrial robots. But why this number is important is that one of our nearest neighbours, China, has very well established robotics and AI policies and roadmaps. And China has the stated ambition that by this year, they will actually um, succeed Korea as the world's number one country in terms of robot population density. So they are aiming to have more than 710 robots per 10,000 employees in China to help make sure that their manufacturing industry remains competitive. Now, if you do a back of the envelope calculation about how many robots that actually is, in a country like China, it ends up being more robots than the human population of Australia. Uh, another thing that China is doing is making sure that they have secured a sovereign supply of robots to help support their manufacturing industry. And so some of you may remember that a few years ago, China purchased KUKA Robotics, a European robotics manufacturer. And this is all part of their plan to make sure that not only can they have a, a high population density of industrial robots, but that they can make those robots within China as well. Now, why is this important? It's important because if you have a look at Australia's labour productivity, and obviously these figures will change with the disruption of COVID-19, but up until that disruption, Australia's labour productivity was growing annually at the rate of about 1.8% per year. It's been very steady. but before COVID-19, it really needed to be up at around 2.5% for us to maintain our standard of living. So that's just maintenance, not improvement. And the way that you bridge the gap between general productivity and labour productivity is most easily met through the application of technology. And robotics and automation is an obvious choice to help bridge that gap. So it's really important for Australia's economy that we are able to bridge that gap and maintain a high level of productivity by the application of technology. And for people who are working in robotics, there really is no better time. Unlike many other new technologies, 58% of people think that robotics will have a positive impact on society. And so despite many of the nightmare headlines that you often see in newspapers about robots taking people's jobs, in reality, people are probably more guided by some of the helpful robots that they see in popular fiction and believe that robots can actually make a positive impact. So that's a very good place to be if we're going to promote the use of robotics. And one of the really exciting things that we found when we were putting the roadmap together was the amazing success stories that characterise the robotics industry in Australia. There really are some fantastic companies and some amazing innovations happening. Unfortunately, they've been somewhat of a well-kept secret. And it was fantastic during the roadmap process to be able to unearth some of these stories. So many people might be familiar that Australia was the first country in the world to automate its mine sites. Uh, but there are a number of other areas where we have made significant inroads um, and some of the companies uh, that are uh, featured in the first robotics roadmap are pictured here. And they are developing robots that can be applied across a range of different sectors uh, with multiple different benefits. So one of the questions that we had when first putting together the robotics roadmap was really what is the robotics industry in Australia? How large is it? How many companies? What are they actually producing? How many people do they employ? Are they exporting? What does the robotics industry look like? And there really was no data. And so we tried to put together a capability map. All of the little red dots that you can see across Australia there represent 
companies that are involved or have a capability in robotics. And when I talk about robotics, I mean robotics in the very broadest sense of the word. Robotics cannot exist in isolation from a range of other technologies that make robots operate. The development of sensors is important. The use of computer vision to help robots navigate is important. So we wanted to capture all of the companies that were in the sphere of robotics. So using a lot of the keywords that you see listed on this slide, we went looking for companies that specialised in these areas. And that was because, unfortunately, um, a lot of companies that are operating in the robotics space don't conveniently call themselves robotics companies. So we had to cast quite a wide net and then narrow it down to make sure that these companies were operating in the space that we thought that they were. And why this is important is because when we talk about the robotics industry in Australia, and particularly when we're looking to maybe influence government policy to make it easier for companies to start to produce robots in Australia or to start to manufacture uh, sensors and other systems that help to support robotics infrastructure, then it's really important to be able to describe what that industry looks like. And if we can't say how many companies there are that exist and what they're worth to the Australian economy, then it's very hard to make an argument that there's, uh, it's, a, it's an important industry to support. And so what we found was that, and this is a very conservative estimate, that there are more than a thousand companies operating in the robotics space in Australia at the moment, that they employ more than 50,000 people and are worth in excess of $12 billion in revenue to the Australian economy. The bubble plot that you see uh, uh, on top of the map of Australia there is really just to give you an idea of the level of activity in robotics that's happening in different states. But there's really no surprises there. It's based on a whole range of factors, such as how many universities are teaching courses which have robotics at their core, how many um, particular centres of excellence or research centres uh, exist in different states, how many subscribers to robotics related um, societies exist in different states. Uh, but really the size of these bubbles are very closely reflect the size of the population of each state. So um, nothing unusual there. We have, have a fairly even distribution of robotic activity across most of the states of Australia. And so after putting all of this information together and finding some great case studies of some of the great work being done in Australia in the robotics area, we released the robotics roadmap in June 2018. And this is what it looked like. We put forward a series of recommendations. Uh, there were actually a total of 18, but these, these could be divided up into recommendations for industry, for the education sector, for government, for the research and development sector, and also just in general, uh, some recommendations of what the culture in Australia would, would need to look like to help support a sustainable and thriving robotics industry. So for industry, uh, we really need for there to be more stimulus for high tech firms and you know potentially some of the global tech giants to come and invest in Australia. And importantly, we need to look at how we can reskill many of the people uh, in Australia's workforce to be able to apply their skills to robotics. In terms of education, all Australians really need to be equipped with industry for relevant skills to help adapt to many of the disruptive technologies that are going to increasingly be coming our way. For the government, we recommended that catalyzing robotics activity would be helped by changing a range of some of the standard frameworks and, and also by leading by example by adopting robotics. For research and development, the importance of developing clusters of activities and encouraging uh, investment from venture capital firms was recognised uh, and also encouraging the application of the social sciences to help us to understand the human impacts of uh, more developments in robotics. And finally, we recognise the need that for Australia to develop our niche robotics capability, we really need to harness the nation's imagination 
And I think there are many challenges that we could apply robotics to that would really inspire people and, and make it easier for people to consider a career in robotics. So the Robotics Roadmap for Australia is structured in a very similar manner to the way that the US Robotics Roadmap is structured and it's mainly developed around um, different sectors. So these are sectors in the, uh, of the Australian economy that are recognised by the Australian Bureau of Statistics. One of the difficulties that we had in collecting data about Australia's robotics capability was simply because the Australian Bureau of Statistics does not collect data on robotics companies or robotics related technology companies. And so we had to find other ways that we could collect that data. But what we do know from the Australian Bureau of Statistics uh, is how much different sectors of the economy are worth to Australia. So this diagram requires a little bit of unpicking. On the right hand side in the, the blue semicircle are all sectors of the Australian economy that generate revenue for Australia. And on the left hand side in the purple semicircle are all sectors of the Australian economy that, are, that we invest in. And the size of the circles gives you an idea of the level of investment. The different colours of the sectors represent our assessment of how much those sectors are already applying robotics and automation. So you can see the three sectors that we know are already applying robotics and automation are defence, manufacturing and resources, all significant parts of the Australian economy. But the other sectors that are not in green are the ones where robotics is only really just starting to have an impact or in some cases very little impact yet but these are the areas where we're likely to see uh, the most disruption when robotics is adopted in these sectors and as you can see some of these sectors like services are, are a very strong component of the Australian economy so when robotics does start to have an impact on that sector it will be quite significant. One of the findings from the robotics roadmap was while we divided the roadmap into talking about the application of robotics to different sectors, what we heard from different sectors was that actually they'd really like to find out what people in other sectors were doing. Just like the Australian Bureau of Statistics, we tend to divide ourselves up into different sectors. So if you work for a manufacturing company, it would probably be quite unusual for you to decide to go along to a mining conference or to a medical device conference. However, it is often by finding out what is happening in the application of robotics in other sectors that we can, I guess, escape the, the traditional mindset that we might have and think of new ways of doing things. So we heard a, a clear, for there being more dissemination of information across sectors. And while I can't say that we have a perfect answer to how we can do that, at least the roadmap by putting forward the way that robotics is currently being used in different sectors does give some insight into how different sectors are applying robotics differently and where some of the opportunities might lie. Another recommendation from the roadmap was around creating technology clusters. Uh, in uh, Australia, an example of where this is occurring uh, is in Queensland, where in manufacturing, we're seeing mass customization and reshoring of jobs back to Australia, thanks to the application of robotics. The idea behind technology clusters uh, is really, this is an example from Pittsburgh in the US about having companies in technology located in quite close proximity. So Pittsburgh is a city that was undergoing uh, quite a disruptive transformation. It was traditionally a steel making town and was looking at uh, quite a dismal future when the steel industry started to close down. So a few people decided that they didn't want to see this happen and they felt that the future for Pittsburgh lay in making itself a technology cluster. Pittsburgh had the uh, fortunate, um, uh, had some fortunate circumstances. They had a couple of very strong universities locally, so they had a good supply of talent and they were able to convince a range <clears throat> excuse me, of technology companies to come and locate themselves in Pittsburgh. And as you can see, they're located in quite close proximity. What this means is that a technology cluster 
gives the opportunity for to attract talent and also to retain the talent that's being created in Pittsburgh and gives them the op a range of opportunities. It also means that uh, people can actually be transferring information across these different technology companies without stealing IP, but just by finding how to do things well in one place, it tends to trickle through to the other places. But importantly, what it means is that often what we see in Australia is that we do develop some great talent and technologies, but they tend to look overseas for investment and for opportunities. So for us to have the, the key ingredients necessary to retain our talent and technologies and keep them in Australia, we really need to look at ways that we can develop these type of technology clusters. And once we do that, then the hope is that investment will follow. If we can create this ecosystem, then uh, hopefully we can keep our talent and technologies and also raise the investment that we, we need to be able to keep those technologies and talent here in Australia. Another outcome from the robotics roadmap has been the creation of the Queensland Robotics Cluster. It is just starting to get up and running and we're hoping that this will provide a bit of a blueprint for how we can set up robotics clusters in all of Australia's major capital and regional centres. Following on from the robotics roadmap, um, we commissioned a report called the Robotics and Automation Advantage specifically for the state of Queensland. And this was really to have a look at what it would mean for the economy of that state if we were to be able to encourage investment in this area. Uh, you might also be interested in a report that was released by the economic consulting firm Alpha Beta called Staying Ahead of the Game, which explores the impact that robotics and automation specifically has on the minerals and energy sectors. Now, one of the things that the uh, Robotics and Automation Advantage in Queensland report found was that over the next 10 years, and a very conservative estimate, is that if the state actually applies robotics and automation, that it would result in 1.5% uh, an annual growth, an additional 77 billion to gross state product, and the creation of more than 725,000 jobs, which is almost half a billion more jobs in the state's economy than over the past decade. And why that's important is that so often we hear that the adoption of robotics leads to job destruction. Whereas in reality, the adoption of robotics and automation typically will lead to far more job creation. And the sticking point, I think, for most um, governments really is how you can ensure that people are ready for those new jobs. Because while it's creating jobs, the jobs are not necessarily the same as the jobs that have existed in the past. So a very important part of this whole process has to be how you can put in place mechanisms for people to be able to reskill for a robotics and automation economy. But what this study did show was that the gains are significant. And the Queensland economy is not so different from other states in Australia uh, for these lessons to just be um, solely for Queensland alone. It really is applicable to everywhere in Australia. And another important message from this report and from other reports that have come out about Australia's general adoption of artificial intelligence is that our op opportunity to take up these technologies is really time limited. So while there were significant benefits, even from a very conservative estimate of the advantage of taking on robotics and automation, those benefits only accrue if Australia takes on these technologies quickly. If we defer a decision, if we decide to wait and see, then those benefits completely disappear. So there is a real imperative for us to push the robotics industry in Australia further and push the support for adoption of robotics and automation in this country. Now, some of the outcomes from the roadmap, uh, there were more than um, 7 million impressions and generally positive media sentiment around the release of the roadmap. 
it has created an increased awareness of robotics, uh, particularly across different levels of government. It led to the formation of a group called the Sixth Wave Alliance uh, as part of CSIRO's Data61, and we're now morphing that into something we're calling the Robotics Australia Network. It's led to the Queensland Robotics Cluster. As Senator Kim Carr stressed the importance of it in terms of changing the narrative around robotics towards one around job creation. And our chief scientist, Alan Finkel, who also attended the launch, felt that there were three key messages from the roadmap. And that is that it highlights that many of Australia's traditional industries are high tech. So people often don't think of Australia as having a technology sector in its own right, but that's probably because a lot of the interesting things happening in technology are happening in areas that people can consider more traditional, such as mining and agriculture. And these industries really are responsible for developing a lot of our tech capacity. And obviously, if we don't uh, have a more diverse workforce, then we are missing out on a considerable amount of talent. And one of the most rewarding things about being involved in putting the roadmap together was the opportunity to really highlight some of the great things that Australians can feel proud of um, being involved in, in terms of uh, having some world firsts in the field of robotics. So Australia was the first country in the world to automate its, its ports. Um, we've got scientists developing flying and underwater robots to help protect the Great Barrier Reef. Australian mine sites are already deploying self-driving haulage vehicles. There are a lot of things that Australia can rightfully be proud of in terms of, of what our robotics industry has started to do. But it would be fair to say that our robotics industry is immature and fragmented. And one of the aims of putting together a second version of the roadmap is really around trying to put in place some mechanisms that will help support that ecosystem and make it so that these stories are no longer hidden and that people are more aware of some of the great work that's happening in robotics in Australia. So the reason that we're looking at putting version two together is to help keep the momentum going that was started with the formation and creation of the first robotics roadmap. Uh, if you're familiar with the first robotics roadmap, we tried to put together some five, 10 and 15 year horizon goals for each sector. Uh, and we really could do with a lot more detail in those areas in the, the second version of the roadmap. It's also a way where we can help to identify where Australia can make a difference. It might be that there are many areas where it makes sense for us to adopt ideas and technology from other countries, but there are certain areas where Australia has a unique advantage and we need to take advantage of that. We want to be able to keep unearthing the capability. Uh, it's amazing how many new companies uh, spring up to our attention uh, through this process, and they each have really interesting stories to tell about their unique capabilities. And our ultimate goal is to establish a clearly recognised robotics industry in Australia so that um, you know, we can easily um, demonstrate what the benefits are to Australia of having a robotics industry and what it is that this adds to the value for the nation. So, because of COVID-19, we've had to move to um, actually producing a lot of the workshops that we would normally have face-to-face. -face. We've had to move to a virtual format. And because that's not the ideal way to collect everybody's opinion, we've put a survey together so that if you would like to contribute to the roadmap, we encourage you to complete this survey so that you can give us your opinions or just recommend case studies that we might include in the next roadmap of some great Australian ingenuity. Finally, if you want any information on the roadmap, then please go and check out the Robotics Australia Network. Uh, you can find a link to the survey there and also recordings of many of the roadmap workshops. Thank you for listening and I hope you'll be involved in putting the second version of Australia's Robotics Roadmap together. Thank you.